<sighs> Every time I start with a sigh, I don't know why. What? Hey guys, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about my most anticipated book releases for 2021. There's not a whole lot to be honest with you. There's like 10. I've got like 10 here. I don't have a heap because to be honest with you, my goals for next year are to read more backlist books. If you look at my Goodreads challenges, first of all you would notice I've never reached one of them. <laughs> Except this time. I'm two books away this time. I've never been this close to hitting a goal before. I've really read nothing. So my goal is really to just read the backlist books that I've been wanting to read for the longest time. But that being said, there are a couple new releases that sound pretty interesting. Most of these I'm pretty sure are YA. I think I've got like two non-fiction on here. Maybe only one. I'm gonna try to go in order. Let's see. So the first one is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. This one comes out January 12th. So this is like a prequel to The Hate You Give, which I read this this year and I fucking loved it. It's honestly one of my top books of the year. I mean, I didn't read that many, but like even still, it's one of my top books of all time. I really fucking love that book. This one is actually about Star Carter's dad when he was 17, when Star's older brother was born. And like, that's the kind of period it takes place in. Um, and if you read The Hate You Give, you would know that um, Star's dad was involved with gangs. And so this is kind of like following that period of his life. So yeah, really excited for that one. Comes out January 12th. The next one comes out on February 9th and it's a faux love story. So this is kind Kind of like, I don't know, I think I've heard this one be described as like Romeo and Juliet between rival faux restaurants. So there's these two families, they both own faux restaurants. They're competitors and I'm pretty sure they're like, their stores are right next to each other. Follows these two teenagers, their parents run the restaurants. I think they've heard of each other but they've never met each other before. And then one day they have this chance encounter and the sparks fly. So yeah, sounds very interesting. Cannot wait to read this one. February 9th. The next one comes out on March 2nd and it's Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. My accent just fucked that man's name up so bad. I'm so sorry. I'm really, I apologize sincerely. This one is like a science fiction book. So it's about this, this, I don't know, it's a robot called Clara and she's like an artificial friend. She has really great like observational qualities. She's literally just designed to be a best friend basically. The Blurb says that she's like sitting in this store watching the passers-by and the people who come in waiting to be bought by somebody. I think it delves into like artificial intelligence, society and humanity and I think that's very interesting. So okay, if the lighting keeps fucking up, I'm so sorry. It's really hard to manage the lighting in this room. Anyway, yeah, Clara in the Sun sounds very interesting. March 2nd. The next one is How Beautiful We Were. This one comes out March 9th. This one is set in a fictional African village called Kosawa. I'm going to read you the blurb for this one. It tells the story of a people living in fear amidst environmental degradation wrought by an American oil company. Pipeline spills have rendered the farmlands infertile. Children are dying from drinking toxic water. Promises of cleanup and financial reparations to the people are made but ignored and basically like has a really corrupt government. It's led by a dictator who's really just acting in self-interest. The people of Kosawa decide to fight back against the government. Follows this girl called Thula. She grows up to become a revolutionary. It says, um, it explores what happens when the reckless drive for profit coupled with the ghost of colonialism comes up against one community's determination to hold onto its ancestral land and a young woman's willingness to sacrifice everything for the sake of her people's freedom. Sounds very fucking good. This one comes out March 9th. Oh shit, there's another one for January. All right, let's go into that one. It's, an, it's a non-fiction. It's called Work Won't Love You Back, how devotion to our jobs keeps us exploited, exhausted, and alone. I feel like the title is pretty self-explanatory as to what this book is going to be about. The tagline is, a deeply reported examination of why doing what you love is a recipe for exploitation, creating a new tyranny of work in which we cheerily acquiesce to doing jobs that take over our lives. I think this one goes more into the idea of like doing what you love, like do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life, and how whether you're like working for exposure or for experience, it's kind of like doing something you love isn't really work, so you're kind of expected to give more of yourself to it and not complain. It shouldn't be a problem to break your back doing something just because you love it. Like it's still work at the end of the day. I feel like it's probably gonna look into freelancers and things like that because I feel like a lot of people get fucked over with freelance jobs and they're expected to do a lot of shit for free and a lot of stuff with no payoff. With a lot of the time being told like, this is your passion, that's your hobby. It's what you love doing, like you should be happy to do it for free. And I think that's very interesting. So this is a, like a non-fiction sociology book. Sounds very interesting, up my alley. It comes out January 26th. So the next one is Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Imidie. I think it's like a thriller, mystery thriller. This one deals with institutionalized racism. It follows students at Niveus Private Academy where money paves the hallways and the students are never less than perfect. 
until now because anonymous texter aces is bringing two students dark secrets to light i think people have said that this one reminds them of gossip girl like if you had to give it a comparison sounds fucking good this one comes out june 10th very excited next one also coming out in june and that's a fucking lie it's actually coming out in july the tiger mom's tale by lynn lau butler this one comes out july 6th this one follows a girl called lexa thomas from what I've heard, I think half her family is Taiwanese, half her family is living in America. I don't know if they're white or not, but they're living in America. Let me read you the blurb for this one. Alexa Thomas has never quite fit in. Having grown up in a family of blondes, while more closely resembling Constance Wu, she's neither white enough nor Asian enough. Visiting her father in Taiwan as a child, Lexa thought she'd finally found a place where she belonged, but that was years ago, and even there, some never truly considered her to be Taiwanese. When her estranged father dies unexpectedly, leaving the fate of his Taiwanese family in Lexa's hands, her safe life in New York City is no longer enough. She's faced with the choice to return to Taiwan to claim her place in her heritage, or leave her Taiwanese family to lose their home for good. Armed with the advice of two sisters, one American and the other one Taiwanese, who can't stand each other, a mother who has rediscovered her sexuality, and a man whose kisses make her walk into walls, Lexa finally confronts the person who drove her away from Taiwan all those decades ago. That sounds so fucking interesting. Does it not? The Tiger Mom's Tale, July 6th. I've decided to just completely abandon the whole idea of going in order of publication because we've been jumping around. Because this next one comes out in May. <laughs> Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Manansala. First of all, I think this cover is super cool, right? This one is about a girl called Leah Makapagal. Lilla Makapagal. She's tasked with saving her auntie's failing restaurant. Um, and she has to deal with a group of matchmaking aunties who shower her with love and judgment. There's this notoriously nasty food critic who happens to be her ex-boyfriend. He drops dead moments after a conversation with Lilla and then everything just kind of turns from there. The cops are treating her like she's the one and only suspect. There's a shady landlord that's trying to kick them out of the restaurant so they can resell the store and she basically turns herself into Agatha motherfucking Christie and she decides to solve this shit on her own because it seems like everyone is working against her and I love that. So yeah, I'm very excited for that one as well. That one comes out May 4th. The next one is Dial A for Aunties by Jess this one is another murder mystery that involves a team of messy aunties, which fuck yes. So this one deals with a Chinese Indonesian family. The description says this. One, accidental murder. Two, thousand wedding guests. Three, maybe cursed generations. Four meddling Asian aunties to the rescue. It's about a girl called Medlin, Medlin Chan, who accidentally ends up killing her blind date. And basically her mom and all of her aunties help her get rid of the body. But unfortunately, I don't know what the fuck happens, but accidentally they manage to ship the fucking dead body in a cake cooler to this like over the top billionaire wedding. Basically her family has like a, has a wedding business and it's like the biggest job that, it's like the biggest wedding job their family's ever done. And they ship a dead body to it. Messy team of aunties covering up for a murder. Like I'm already there. I'm already there. I'm setting up my tent in front of the bookstore, camping out, waiting for the release as we speak. I'm so excited. Like, bitch. Honestly, like, don't fucking talk to me when this book is released, you know? Like, I'm not available. Anyway, comes out April 27th. I'm so fucking excited for this one. And yes, next one is Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. This one comes out September 16th. Now, the first thing I want to say about this is that I don't actually know why the fuck this is on my anticipated releases, but I think this is a case of... I've met this author multiple times. I've been to almost all of his book releases since Illuminae came out. Like, I've been to all three Nevernight releases. I've been to his Gemina and Obsidio release. I've been to his Aurora Rising release. Lifelike release, I went to that. I've been to so many releases for this man, and I've never fucking read a book. Like, I'm just now reading his books. I read Illuminae recently, which I'm going to talk about in a video soon. And I'm currently reading Gemina, which we will discuss. I don't even, like, I don't even like vampires. I don't, I really don't know why I'm, why I'm putting this in here. But I think, like, I know it's going to be on my list to read regardless. And I think because I've met him so many times, he lives in, he lives in my home city. And also I've been watching his Instagram stories and he's been talking, like, nonstop about this fucking book. You know when you see the process of a book being written? Like, when you follow an author and they're just, like, constantly putting out, like, sneak previews and, like, talking about the process of getting the book published. And then when it's actually published, you're like, okay, I, I may as well read it. But yeah, this one is... Is, it's about a vampire obviously <laughs> according to him cool vampires not twilight vampires the genres are like paranormal vampires dark fantasy supernatural horror adult urban fantasy so apparently they're all the categories it falls under they're genres that i never read to be honest with you but like i'm willing to give it a go gabrielle 
de Leon. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it. Gabriel de Leon. It's one of the last silver saints. A holy order dedicated to, defini to deafening realm and church, now utterly destroyed. Imprisoned for the murder of the vampiric king, Gabriel is charged with telling the story of his life. So it talks about his youth in a monastery, a love spell, betrayal, a grail, eternal light. Like I'm hearing a lot of shit that like, you know, like I feel like you know what this story is going to be about, you know? Anyways, interesting? Possibly. We'll see. Oh, for a minute I thought it was said 800 pages and I was about to fucking remove this from my list immediately. <laughs> but it's 400 pages. I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go for that. Anyway, that's the last book on the list. My battery is dying. Let's just finish this video. Okay, so they're all the books. The video kind of got derailed when we got to J. Christoph's book. But I really do want to try to read all of these as they come out this year. That's all for my most anticipated 2021 releases. I would love to know what books you guys are highly anticipating the release of for next year. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Have a great day.